Okay, let's uh, proceed ahead. Take a look at uh, this open feed water heater. Uh, okay, I'll do this. Let's see what we can do. Insert, put uh, put some kind of a shape on there. There we go. So it's not too good because you can't see anything, but uh, let's change it to um, a nice red line with the dash. And that's the way we might draw a control volume around this. And the idea is that we're going to write the first law for this uh, device and we're going to look at everything that crosses the control volume. Heat and work as well as any energy flows. And the total of all of that <laughs> has to add up to zero. Uh, so uh, first of all we assume this feed water heaters are adiabatic, that there's no external heat transfer. They're well insulated. So um, what the first law will say is that the mass flow rate coming from uh, state 8, Y times H8 plus the mass flow rate uh, coming from uh, state 4, Uh, times H4 is equal to uh, the 1 times um, the mass flow rate F5. So um, notice that if, if, if this is the full flow 1 coming out here then um, and this is Y the fraction coming here then the flow rate here is uh, 1 minus Y and that may not be immediately obvious but we could find that out by uh, backtracking through here and looking at the fact that we've got 1 minus y minus z coming in here but then we add to it z and so when we add 1 minus y minus z plus z we get 1 minus y so this is 1 minus y flowing in this branch here okay so um, all of that said I think we can try to uh, put a control volume on that second feed water heater and I'll try to stick an equation in here okay and so the equation would say that y times h Yeah, I got to go back. Uh, what h is at? 8. Y times h8 and 1 minus y times h4. Plus 1 minus y times h4. And when we put those together, that has to equal to 1 times. Uh, H6. Uh, sorry, 1 times H5. Yes, H5 is what's coming out of here. Okay, so if we fill this out, it looks like that. So, so what? Well, this gives us an equation that we can uh, solve for y, and hopefully I can do that. Uh, y is equal to um, H5. Yeah, I had this trouble before. Y is equal to H5 minus H4 divided by H8 minus H4. So if we um, can find those states, which we should be able to, then we can calculate this fraction y. So let's see if we can do it. Uh, what is h5? Well, h5, you'll recall, 
is a saturated liquid. Remember, it said everything leaving the um, everything leaving the sat the feed water heaters was saturated liquid. So we have saturated liquid air. So that's going to be HL as a function of the pressure. And what pressure do we have there? Uh, P5. How about that? So that's H5. What about H4? Uh, H4 is a little bit harder. H4 is what's coming after this pump. So let's wait on that. What about H8? Well, it's a little bit harder too. <laughs> We're going to have to find those uh, independently. Uh, do we know condition 3? Yes, we know condition 3. So uh, it's saturated liquid at 200 kPa. So we know that. We can find the isentropic process uh, for the pumping here, and we can find uh, H4. So let's do it this way. Uh, this is equal to the yeah, same thing, except this is P3. But we can find the properties for state 3 because it's saturated liquid. But now we need to find the state uh, 4. So the way we'll do that is making use of the isentropic process in the pump. Uh, probably ought to do this the old fashioned way every once in a while. But uh, remember, the other thing we can do is find the work for the pump as integral of VDP, and then we can find H4 that way. Uh, let's, let's do it that way, uh, just to. Just to mix things up a little bit. Uh, the work in the pump 3 to 4 will be equal to um, the integral minus VDP, but I need V3, which is the specific volume. And that's meters cubed per kilogram. Um, and so with the V3, I can calculate the work for that pump equal to V3 times uh, P2 minus P3. There we go. Uh, seems to be a very small number. Uh, yeah, I've got my states crossed up. I'm actually looking for 3 to 4. So I need 3 to 4, not 2 to 3. So three to four. Okay, so that's the work. Now remember, uh, with these um, functions, we could do it do it the other way, but this is this is the old-fashioned way. This is the way you would do it if you were having to calculate by hand. Let's make sure we've got the right values here, and yeah. So, so now we've got H4, we've got H5, we need to find H8, and in order to do that, we need to find H7. Well, H, um, the enthalpy coming out of the boiler is specified by the pressure and temperature. And so we know that pressure and we know that temperature. 
The only problem is we haven't defined what that temperature is. Okay, so we got a lot of energy associated with that. But we don't need H7, we need H6. Or excuse me, H8. And to get H8, we need to make use of the isentropic expansion in the turbine. And Finally, we can find H8 because H8 is defined in terms of the pressure and the entropy. The pressure is the pressure 8 and the entropy is the entropy 8. Okay, so now we can find the value of, uh, I'm going to call it y fraction. What's it equal to? h5 minus h4 divided by h8 minus h4. So about 7% of the flow needs to be extracted there. Um, and we could show that as a percentage, sure. Okay. Probably need to make a break there and uh, come back and work some more of it.